Hi, everybody. On today's episode of Ohio Tropics on YouTube, I'm going to show you how to propagate Sansevieria. So there are multiple ways that you can propagate Sansevieria. I'm going to go through and mention at least all three and provide some additional resources in the description of the video. So let's get started. So the first way and probably the most immediate satisfying way of getting an instant plant is simply by taking, taking your existing plant, pulling it out of its pot, and just simply dividing it at, at the roots, uh, as simple as that. I'm not actually going to show that right now. Um, in this episode, I'm going to show the water propagation method step by step, okay? And so as you can see, this plant has multiple, multiple crowns growing out of it, so you would just all right, we're gonna get started again. I had an interruption in the video and most of it didn't record. So I'm doing another, I'm propagating more Sansevierias. <laughs> I'm gonna explain exactly how I did so, this. Anyway, like I mentioned, you can take an existing plant, pull it out of the pot and just divide the plant, as simple as that. And pot it up into different, different pots, okay? Another way is that you can propagate Sansevierias is by soil propagation. So you could take leaf cuttings and soil propagate them. So this is actually the mother plant. And I took some ugly torn um, leaves because I got this at a discount for five bucks, I think at Lowe's. And some of the leaves were tattered. So I took some of the ugly leaves. You can see here where I cut the leaf segments, okay? And basically just dipped them in rooting hormone and stuck them in soil. It takes a long time to grow pups, but you can see the pups. I will put the link to that post in the description of this video. Okay, so make sure you take a look at that. Okay, but the main purpose of today's video is I'm going to show you how to water propagate Sansevieria, okay? But before we get to that, whether you use the soil propagation methods or you, whether you take leaf cuttings and soil propagate them or water propagate them, if you have a Sansevieria that has variegated leaves, such as this one, with the beautiful yellow variegation, okay, the resulting pups will not be variegated. So you have to keep that in mind. They're, they'll revert back to the original green, plain old green Sansevieria. So if you do want the variegation, you'll, the only way you can really get it is by go, go, uh, going to buy another plant or if you have multiple crowns within one pot, you can just divide them at the roots. Take, take the plant out of its pot and divide them at the roots. This one is only one crown, so I obviously can't divide this plant, so that's okay. All right, so I already did a few here because I had to restart the video, but I went and cut another leaf, okay? So here's a leaf that I cut, snipped it right off at the base of the plant. Okay, and I'd like to mention one very, very, very important point when you take leaf cuttings of Sansevieria, okay? So they could be, you know, make sure they're at least, at least three, four inches, I would say, because you want, you want them to, you know, stand up in your, in your container. So however long, however long you think, okay? So what you're going to take is a cutting that's a few inches. So I'm going to just cut it straight across here. Okay, All right. Now, this is the important part. Okay, right here. You have this one cutting, right? Do not turn this upside down and put this end in the water because it won't root. It just won't. You have to keep it in the same orientation as the way the leaf was growing. So make sure you put this part in the, so in the water, okay? So I'm just putting it in water here, okay? Now, I'm going to show you a couple different options so, so you can do whatever, whatever you would like best. I'm going to do another cutting. Why don't we do another, oh, I'll just do th three more, okay? So cut that way. Again, keep, keep it in the same orientation. One way that you can do, now, these are going to be resting at the bottom of, of the pot, of the vase, right? And the roots will grow, but, you know, they're going to be pressed right up at the bottom. So what you can do, if you'd like, is you can take a triangular cut at the bottom. So that then the roots have somewhere to grow and the pups have a little bit of room. Okay, do that. Put it right in water. 
I'm going to do two more leaf cuttings. Another thing that you can do is, if you don't want to make that V-shaped cutting, you can take a little, this is a Phalaenopsis orchid clip, or you can even take a hair clip actually, and you can put it in water, put it in the vase, and just clip, clip the cutting to secure it against the vase, and then you can elevate it off of the bottom. So now the roots will have room to grow, okay? And there'll be a little bit more space for the plant. I'm just gonna try something different because I thought this was pretty cool. And sometimes the orca clips or hair clips will kind of fling off. Um, so I'm just gonna make that V cut shape and put it in there. And one more. There we go, stick it in water. And there you have it. Okay. Now the tricky part is in the waiting. So <laughs> this, <coughs> <coughs> so I've heard anywhere from the quickest that I've heard that Sansevieria's will root is about 15 days. That is super, 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 super quick. The average is probably two months or so in terms of water propagation. If you do soil propagation of the leaf cuttings, it's going to take you several months. This took, I think, seven or eight months before I got, um, before I got my first pup. So first you'll see the roots. Anywhere from two to three months, I'd say, to form the roots. And then it could be a few months after that before you get any, any pups starting to form at the base. And then once you get the pups, you can go ahead and, and plant them up in, in a nice, well-drained soil as well. I will also put the link to my Sansevieria care post in this description of the video. And also, a couple more tips what you want to do. This is probably a little bit too much water, so I'm going <clears> to <throat> pour maybe a little bit, a little bit out. You don't really want that much water. Just make sure that the cut is fully submerged. Okay. You know, allow for a little extra for evaporation. And you do want to change the water periodically. So change it once or twice a week and make sure that the water is clear. If you see any cloudiness, go ahead and change your water immediately. I just use <clears throat> regular tap water. If you use a water softener system in your home, you can't use that. So go ahead and either use rainwater or you can use maybe distilled water, or, you know, water from a uh, filtered or purified water in a, in a gallon container that you can buy. Um, but go ahead and change the water once or twice a week and, and that's it. And then the hardest part is really in the waiting. You can put these in, don't, don't stick them in the dark, you know, put them somewhere where they get some bright light, bright indirect light. Even, even if you have a tiny bit of morning sun, that's okay. That's all right too. Just don't put them in full blazing sun, um, but a little bit, a little bit of sun won't do it harm at all. In fact, it may even speed it up. Um, I haven't uh, experimented with that, but I've heard in some cases that it could actually speed it up. So I'm actually just going to put this in an eastern facing window on my plant stand, and we'll see how it goes. So. That's all, folks. That's all you have to do. And hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you like this video, go ahead and like this video, comment on this video, and also subscribe to my YouTube channel. And don't forget to subscribe to my blog at ohiotropics.com for a lot of plant care information. So hope you enjoyed this post, and I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.